Hello, good friends. I'm Ron Timmermans, one of the many hosts with the Florida Aviation Network. And may I give you a warm Central Florida welcome from Lakeland, Florida. Today we're broadcasting with the Florida Aviation Network live and in the clear from the Sun and Fun campus at Lakeland, Florida. This is the 48th annual Sun and Fun Aerospace Expo. And what an event it is going to be. We've got uh, many, many people here. We're expecting record crowds and the like. If you're already here, that's great, and probably watching this uh, as an archived video. But if you're not here and watching us live stream, well, thank you and welcome. I'm glad you're joining us today. I wish you were here, but since you can't be here this year, go ahead and make your reservations now for next year, because it's never too early to make reservations for Sun and Fun. The rooms and the uh, rental cars and everything uh, book out very quick. So we'll look forward to seeing you next year in 2023. We've got an action-packed uh, number of uh, interviews that we're going to have uh, this week, uh, each day up until the middle of the afternoon. And uh, you will get introduced to a number of uh, aviation personalities, people that are involved in the aviation industry, uh, sun and fun, and um, just some great people to talk to. One of those folks is with me today. His name is Justin LaFerriere, and he is the uh, Senior Visitor Services Manager for the uh, Central Visit Central Florida uh, organization, an organization that, well, Justin, why don't you tell us a little bit about it. Thank you for joining us, by the way. Ron, thank I you for having me. Appreciate you having us. So tell us a little bit about uh, Central Florida. So Visit Central Florida is the destination marketing organization for Central Florida's Polk County. We are very simply charged with to uh, put heads in beds and make cash registers ring for the fine folks here in Central Florida's Polk County. And we do that through a number of different ways, whether that be uh, sports and special events, or leisure travel and tourism marketing as well to bring in uh, your everyday vacationers, if you will. And there's a lot of vac vacationers that come to Central Florida, I'm sure. There are, I um, mean, you know, and thankfully coming out of uh, what we've all dealt with over the last few years, we've seen uh, an abundance of travelers coming back to Central Florida's Polk County over the last year, year and a half. Um, we're very, very happy, <coughs> excuse me, to have them back <coughs> and welcome them back, uh, especially for the event like Sun and Fun this year. Well, that's great. So. Um, of course, uh, we all know and loathe what happened in 2020 and 2021. And as you and I were talking just a bit before the broadcast began, um, uh, we were both wondering if it would ever return back to normal after yeah. uh, 2020 and the shutdown of, of everything with uh, the COVID uh, pandemic. So I'm glad to hear that uh, tourism is back in Central Florida, we could say, right? With a vengeance? You, you could definitely say that tourism is, tourism is back and better than ever. Better than ever. Better than ever. Last year, we set a record with our tax collections, or our overnight stays, or our tax collections through the short-term accommodations. And this year, we're on track to far surpass that. So, Wow, so two record-setting years in a row. Yeah, leading up to the pandemic, we were on seven years of record growth. Uh, last year, we beat that by, well, we beat our, what was our pre-pandemic record by almost uh, $2 million. And this year, we're gonna blow right past that record of last year as well, so it's. Wow. So the revenue you get uh, with your organization comes from taxes on hotel mm -hmm. rooms, rental cars, and, and the like, I imagine? So we are fully funded by what's called the Tourism Development Tax, or TDT, if you will. And that's a 5% tax that's levied on all short-term accommodations in the county. So think hotel motels, RVs, campgrounds, vacation rental homes. Uh, we don't take any sales tax money. We don't come out of the general fund, so no county taxpayer money or anything like that funds our operation. So I like to tell people, if we don't do our job of putting heads in beds, then we're not funded and we're not operable. So it's all new money coming into the county. Uh, we get that tourism development tax that comes back to us to allow us to market the destination and bring new money back into the county as well. Then of course, while those folks are here, we hope they stay long, they spend a lot of money. So then they're <clears throat> replenishing those coffers of the general fund and, and uh, paying their sales tax as well. So what you're looking at then is that sweet sound of cash registers ringing. You got it. That's good. That's you got good. it. That's what. That's really my bread and butter as a yeah. visitor services manager. But I'm sure it's not all just about raising <laughs> revenue. It's about making an experience for the tourists that come yeah. here and enjoy themselves and make them want to come back again, I would imagine. You got it. I mean, that's really what my department focuses in on is there are those cash registers ringing and improving that visitor experience while they're here. 
You know, we want folks not only to come, but we want them to stay longer, spend more money while they're here, but then come back and do it again. If they're here for a special event, come back during your vacation and enjoy your some pleasure or some leisure time, if you will, and then tell your friends and family about it so they come back and do it too. And obviously they do that, as uh, you can tell from your year-over-year -year, uh, improvement in, in revenue. Yeah. This is good. So, um, Justin, uh, Polk County is where you uh, concentrate your efforts. Mm -hmm. uh, even though it's called Central Florida, it is just one county in Central Florida. Sure. Sandwiched between that small town to the northeast called Orlando <laughs> yeah. and a, a somewhat larger town to the southwest called Tampa. So you're you truly the heart of Central Florida, aren't you, here in Polk County? We are. Uh, my visitor center, our flagship visitor center, I should say, that I, that I get the uh, grateful opportunity to run every day is in northeast, uh, the northeast corridor of our county in Davenport. And we're pretty much dead center of the state right there. We're 80 miles to either coast, uh, right at our visitor center. So most visitors outside our market don't know where Polk County is on a map, especially Polk County, Florida. Some people may think it's Polk County, Iowa, because there is a Polk County, Iowa. Uh, so we use Central Florida as really a geographic locator to kind of dial them in a little bit, and then we can really sell the destination of Polk County as being center, literally the center of the state. Yeah, nothing against uh, Polk County, Iowa, but I've been there, and Polk County, Florida has a lot more to offer, yeah. I would say that for sure, just uh, hands down. We appreciate so, that. Yeah, that's good. It's great. So uh, you mentioned uh, Davenport, one of the cities mm -hmm. in Polk County. Lakeland, obviously, is as well where we are today. Yep. Other other cities in, in Polk County include uh, Winter Haven. Winter Haven, uh, the uh, water ski capital of the world, if you will, right there in Winter Haven with uh, the Channel Lakes and the home to Legoland Florida Resort as well, formerly Cypress Gardens. Uh, and then some co other bigger municipalities, Haines City, Lake Wales, all on the east side of the county as well. But really Lakeland and Winter Haven are what we're known for being the two largest municipalities. Okay, and Legoland, one of the um, major feature attractions, that's in Polk County as well. It is. It is right on the banks of Lake Eloise in Winter Haven. It, uh, it's one of the largest, if not the largest, Legoland theme park in the world. Wow. Uh, we're very excited to have them. They expand every year. They've got three separate accommodations on site there now. They just celebrated 10 years uh, back in October of being here in Polk County. And uh, we're looking for them to grow and be bigger and better than ever for the years to come. As you can tell, Justin knows virtually everything about every uh, tourist uh, opportunity yeah. in, the, in this co county, which I would expect. So that is um, that is truly wonderful. Yeah. Let's see. I was going to mention, uh, or I was going to say, you mentioned uh, a couple of different lakes already in, in what you just said. Sure. Uh, in Polk County, roughly how many lakes are there? 554. 554. Yeah, believe it or not. And I was uh, speaking with um, Steve from the Seaplane Pilots Association. Uh, recently, and if, and if you happen to be a seaplane pilot, um, uh, Polk County is, is a place to be as well because there, yeah. I think Steve said there is over around 500 lakes in which you can operate a seaplane in and out for takeoffs and landings or splash and dashes as they yep. uh, sometimes refer to them. So Polk County, in addition to all the tourist attractions you have, a large selection of lakes for, for aquatic activity and the like. So it just much. so much to, to see and do and uh, so much that Polk County has to offer. This is this is really great. Uh, we talked just a bit about sport events. Sure. So, in addition to coming here and just recreating, relaxing, what sporting events uh, are available to tourists that come here? So we really pride ourselves on youth and amateur sports and recruiting those events here to Polk County. But we try and try our best to diversify that portfolio of the types of events you can see. Our bread and butter is softball and uh, baseball. Excuse me. We just wrapped up uh, the largest spring training collegiate invitational baseball tournament in the country. Welcome to over 250 teams over six weeks here to the county. Simultaneously, while that event was going on, we welcomed over 100 softball, collegiate softball teams to uh, uh, conduct their spring training invitational as well over that same time span. Uh, so you could see that those two sports, those field sports are kind of our bread and butter where we really make our money. Uh, but we try really hard, like I said, to diversify uh, throughout the year and bring in different types of events, uh, volleyball, gymnastics, wrestling, even for the Harry Potter fans out there, we've, uh, we've brought in Quidditch before that is an actual sport that people play. Uh, they run around a field with a broom stick between their legs and throw a ball through hoops and uh, try and score as many points as they can. And there's even a guy that runs around in a gold suit. So if you're not familiar with the stories of, of Harry Potter, I'm sure there are some listeners out there, some viewers <laughs> out there. It is a sight to see, but that's the types of events we really try and bring in uh, to uh, Polk County. Just something different and something new for not only our residents, but uh, for our spectators as yeah, well. Yeah, innovative and creative. I like that. So you mentioned um, uh, softball and baseball. How many ball fields do you have in the county? 
<laughs> That's a great question, oh, okay. Ron. So I'm not positive on that. I can tell you out at our headquarters at Lake Myrtle Sports Complex, we have nine baseball fields out there uh, co- accompanying uh, 11 soccer fields at one complex. We utilize the Channel Lakes Complex in Winter Haven as well, which has uh, eight baseball fields, I believe, eight or nine. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but to, uh, to your point, or to my point earlier as well about baseball being our bread and butter, during the height of the Collegiate Spring Training Invitational that I mentioned, we use every single baseball field we have in this county, whether that be high school, college, youth, our complex at Lake Myrtle. Anywhere we can find a field and put teams on, we'll put them on it. Wow. Now, your role, uh, Justin, do you reach out to universities and colleges and high schools and like and, and try and draw them to here for a tournament, or do you develop the tournaments, or what all do you do? Great question. Uh, we try our best not to manage too many events ourselves. Uh, we're really in the sales arena, meaning we sell the destination to event organizers that have already created the events. We sell the destination as being centrally located, obviously great weather, the opportunity to try different things that Florida has to offer from a leisure perspective, whether that be attractions, the beaches, shopping, anything, uh, leisure tourism uh, that sporting teams may be interested in as well. Uh, we get them here, we help them secure facilities, help them market the event, help them run the event in any way we can, and hopefully they'll sign a long-term deal and, and bring, them back, bring back the event year after year. Oh, so you look for long-term, multi-year Absolutely. contracts for this. Absolutely. That makes sense. And so you use event managers. I, I know just a fleeting little bit about that. Sure. Uh, one of my granddaughters is an event manager with a company that does events okay. and, and the like. And so uh, I'm amazed at all the things that she has to do to get ready yeah. for an event. Uh, and so I can see why in your role you would have to keep your work separate from the detailed, all-encompassing you got uh, work of... Uh, working a specific event that, that would be it. just overwhelming for you it is and that's why we really we really try hard to create great relationships with our local municipalities the the city staffs the parks and rec staffs so they really we make the connection between the event organizers and then the facility operators whether that be a municipality or a private organization and really help to for lack of a better phrase grease the wheels and make sure everything is set in motion so the event happens without a hitch but we allow the facility operators and the event organizers to really connect and work together to make sure the event happens. So do any of the the events that you bring here or the, uh, do they have an impact other than just in tourism and and, uh, bringing cash registers and heads and beds? That's a great, that's a great question, uh, Ron. And and the first example that comes to the top of mind for me would be something like our Lake Myrtle Sports Complex out in Auburndale. It's a city-owned facility, so the Auburndale, city of Auburndale actually owns the facility, but obviously with our partnership and the city of Auburndale, we were able to build that facility. So now the city has a great spot for youth sports, their city league soccer, they can bring out there and, and host at that complex. Same with youth baseball, they bring that out there and have that. So it really gives back to the residents and that allows them to have great facilities, new facilities for the residents to come out and actually participate in, in different youth sports. We're getting ready to do something similar with the city of Winter Haven at the old Channel Lakes Park. That's going to be redeveloped. It's really going to have a city-focused component uh, for residents to come out and enjoy trails and nature parks and kayaks and all that kind of good stuff as well. So do you bring redevelopment funds to the table for projects like that, or do you separate it from that? We separate from that. You know, it's really a, it's really a partnership amongst the county, in our, which we are a county entity amongst the county, the city. Uh, sometimes the state gets involved as well. Uh, it's really, we, we help orchestrate those relationships and bring the, all the funds to the table to make these projects come to fruition and make sure it's something that's not only great for us from an economic impact standpoint, from an event, event standpoint, uh, or basis, excuse me, but a long-term standpoint as well for our municipality so they have something that their residents can uh, really hang their hat on as a, uh, as a jewel for their respective cities and they can go out and enjoy each and every day. Well, well, it sounds like you've uh, realized some major successes for for your company. How long have you been here? I've been with the company for 15 years. 15 years? Yeah, I've actually, I started right out of college and I've been with them ever since. I enjoy what I do. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. It'll be hard for them to move you out. But, Justin, if there's a young person that was listening today that uh, said to, after hearing you, said, I want to be just like Justin LaFerriere when I grow up. What would, what would that person study in school and what would they look at for jobs that would lead up to a job like yours? It's, uh, thank you for asking that, Ron. Now, I, I studied business administration, but a, a concentration in sports management. So um, there are a lot of great academic programs out there that concentrate in hospitality, 
tourism management, things of like that. Any, any, really anything like that. Uh, business admin, marketing. I mean, we're we're in sales. That's what we do. We're in the business of marketing the destination, whether that be to a sports event organizer or to leisure travelers that just want to come here on vacation. So, any sort of sales background, marketing background, and be open to. I know. When I was in college, I was unaware of an organization like this that even existed. You know, my, my idea of hospitality and tourism were front desks at hotels or ride operators at major attractions or things of that nature. Yeah. But there are organizations like ours throughout the country that are charged with promoting the destination. And it's, it's great. We get to talk to people that are either here uh, celebrating their youth, participating in sports, or they're here on vacation. So they're happy. They're fun. They're looking for more to do to keep them happy. And, you know, it's, it's, we're in a great business to be able to help them realize that positive experience and get them to stay longer and spend more money. Yeah, well, that's great. That's great. Well, I think you've probably inspired uh, some young people out there, or maybe some people looking for a second career. And uh, <laughs> the job at Polk County or at Central Florida is, is filled right at the moment. It doesn't look like we're going to pry you out of here for a while. No, so not anytime soon. Find, find another uh, such opportunity in a, in a different, uh, different county. Um, so uh, here at Sun and Fun, which is a major event in Polk County every yeah. year in, in early April and one that I've been going to for a number of years, and so many of my aviation friends and yours uh, come here as well. Uh, so is there a place here at the Sun and Fun campus where we can find out more about Central Florida and tourism if we want to come back other than during the first week in April at Sun and Fun? Well, yeah, there is a place here. Uh, we have probably, I haven't checked, but I'm pretty confident we're the only big blue building with a yellow roof on campus. Big blue building with a yellow With a roof. yellow roof, yes, sir. We we're right at Caddy Corner to Hangar A, right in the center of campus at the corner of Tom Mack Road and Laird Boulevard. Okay. Uh, but we're there 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. all throughout the week. Have all the information necessary for things to see and do here in the county. If you need help with accommodations, we have rates and availability for local accommodations as well. And of course, if you have any questions about the, the actual fly-in, we're happy to answer those. Great, great. So they're actually right here on campus at, right. uh, at Sun and Fun. And so all the information you need either about Sun and Fun or if you want to look at what are the opportunities for me uh, beyond Sun and Fun outside this first weekend in April to come back here to be part of a sport event or just to recreate and enjoy myself and or make this part of my vacation. So you can find that at the on-site visitor center near uh, Hangar A. And so everybody goes to Hangar A. It's one of the vendor booths, right? Exactly. So you'll, you'll uh, come around there and you'll see uh, the uh, uh, blue building with the yellow roof. You got it. Uh, very distinctive. That, that would be good. That would be good. And let's see. So for those who are really tech savvy, yeah. I kind of am halfway tech savvy, um, I'm guessing you probably have something that works on a smartphone now. Is that a fair statement? That is a fair statement. You know, Coming out of the pandemic, we, we saw a need that we needed to engage with those visitors that weren't quite ready to be back in person and talking to myself and my team at our visitor information center. So we developed a mobile app that is available on both the iOS and Android platforms, free to download, and it has all the information you would need from event listings to discounts for shopping and dining to attraction tickets, discounted attraction tickets as well. Uh, we have the capability to help you download that if you need some assistance with that technology, as you were saying, Ron, we can do that and help you with that at the on-site visitor center. That would be the blue building with the yellow roof. You got it. All right, so if you need some tech help for getting the uh, app downloaded, whether you're um, at, you know, getting it from the app store or is it Google Play, the other one for the Android yep, you got platform? It. Yeah, you got it. You can go there and they'll help you get the, down, the, the app downloaded. It's called what? The Visit Central Florida app. Visit Central Very Florida. Simple. Yeah, how, how simple is that? Yes, sir. And so in that, um, so you can uh, purchase tickets to sporting events, right, online? Attractions. Uh, attractions, yeah. okay. Yeah. Attractions, not necessarily the sporting events. You got it, yeah. Okay, but to attractions and the like. And uh, learn more about uh, Central Florida and opportunities for tourism and the like. Yeah. Well, this is, um, this is wonderful news, and uh, certainly you're um, uh, keeping up with the times, of course. And uh, after the pandemic, you said uh, you found that people were reluctant to get involved with face-to-face during the late 2020s and sure. early 21. Um, and so this mobile app just made it a whole lot easier for them not to have to deal face-to-face -face things and face mask and all that. We can just do it all from the comfort of your, your smartphone. You got it. Of course, we would, we would certainly prefer to be able to talk to visitors in person. Um, you know, my team, I would put my team up against anybody else's, <clears throat> not only in the state, but in the country and what we do and be able to engage with visitors on a more intimate level. But like I said, we saw a need 
we wanted to really meet that need to ensure our visitors were, had the information they saw necessary to uh, affect that experience positively while they're here in market. And this was just one way we thought we could do that was be able to get them the information literally in the palm of their hands if they didn't quite feel comfortable enough to come talk to us. Uh, but thankfully, uh, we're not only seeing great traction with the app, but people are starting to come back uh, in person as well to our visitor information centers throughout the county and talk to myself and my team. So it's Well, that's great. It's all Whether good. it's at Davenport, where yep. your headquarters is, or here at the Sun and Fun campus, lots it. of different places you can get information about to visit Central Florida. And so um, it's been my pleasure to host Mr. Justin LaFerriere today. He is the uh, Senior Visitor Service Manager for Central Florida, Visit Central Florida. And it's been my pleasure to um, hear what you have to say. Thank you. Uh, tourism is uh, a, a revived, a revived uh, industry here in Central Florida. Thank you. Uh, an even better year last year than before. And this year it looks like it's going to be on track for an even better year, the best yet, I think. So yes, that's, that'll be great. So um, again, um, Justin's job is not up for grabs. So if you're looking <laughs> for it, you're going to have to look somewhere else. But someday he'll retire, and maybe that'll be the time that uh, you want to get his job. There it looks go. like it's a very fulfilling job, and uh, I envy you. It's one of those uh, where you, uh, if you if you don't think of it as work, it's uh, never a dull job. Is you it? got it. Okay. You got it. Well, Justin, thanks for being with us, uh, and I hope you'll stay tuned for more interviews with equally interesting persons like Justin to follow this. I'm Ron Timmermans, one of the hosts with the Florida Aviation Network. We're broadcasting live and in the clear from the Sun and Fun campus in Lakeland, Florida, the 48th annual EAA Sun and Fun uh, Expo, <laughs> Aerospace Expo. I've got to get it all right there. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you in the next interview.